I think the funniest thing that's happened all week is that I'm I'm in voice chat with pals watching the Game of Thrones and they're all getting fucking super mad. And then like everyone we all have the little round table about how upset everyone is. And then I go on Twitter and the first thing I see is Westworld season three announced. Yeah. And I'm just like Yeah. Oh, today's a grand day. Yeah. Today is the grandest of all days. Warning. The following program contains spoilers for the final episode of Game of Thrones. Are we going to leave that to the end, or do we not give a shit anymore? Or at the very least, maybe not coherent spoilers, <laughs> just mumbling and grumbling. So, by the way, I... Noises, occasional barks and farts. I got pseudo-caught up, so if you want to do a proper spoiler cast just for a little bit, I can do it at the end. and grumblings, and... Uh, proper thought collection, because j- the timing of these... Anyway, that's my spoiler warning. And oh, okay. That's also my assault warning for if you're uh, living in your tent and enjoying right. your content, you may uh, eject. You're, en- you're enjoying your consumption of product? Yep. You may eject now. Um, this week might not be for you, and I will do my best to give you a kind heads up that uh, you're not going to... If you liked it, you're not going to like what I have to say. Wooly. So there you go. It sounds like you're going that salty YouTuber route. To get those clicks, yo. Get those clicks. You know what my favorite part about that comment is? Is like, we don't work no, on need, clicks! Dude, dude, we don't just, work it's, on clicks! Don't, don't, it's not, it's whatever, you know? They just used the Kotaku language and just transplanted it into a new situation. So, yeah. That Game of Thrones finale happened uh, yesterday. It sure did. Oh, yeah. Um... You know what I was really surprised by? What's that? The hard cut montage to It's Something Unpredictable, <laughs> but in the end it's right. I hope you had the time of your life. Yeah. And you I... got to see all the best memories of seasons one to four yeah. as, you know, like all the fun things are happening and all the kids are growing up and another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. And you see the dire wolves and. Joffrey. Do you remember Joffrey? Oh. Tom um, grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. And I I thought yeah. it was I thought it was yeah. really I thought it was really crazy when Lightning turned to Jon Snow. That's right, Lightning, and said, You know, Jon Snow, we really are the Final Fantasy 13. Hmm. <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's my favorite. Oh man. Lightning, what, All right. what should we call it, Lightning? Should we call it the Final Fantasy XIII? I mean, quite frankly, the coolest reveal of the <laughs> entire... The entire series and IP, for that matter. The intellectual property, the A IP. Song of Ice and Fire. Oh, yes. Otherwise known as A Song of Cersei and Fire. Yeah. A Game of Thrones, A what? Storm of Swords, A Feast for Crows. There's other ones in there. Clash of Kings. A Clash of Kings. That's the one. Um, an exposure of balls. Mm. Uh, I really was quite impressed with the introduction of a new power that dragons have. Oh, yes? Dragons have a new power. Is it, yes? Dragons have the power to understand symbolism, dude. Oh, man. Did you know? I did know that. That's fucking sick. I did know that. Right? At any point, the dragon in the story can kind of like glance off frame at the plot of, or the script and totally understand oh, it's a metaphor. the meanings of the me- yeah and then <laughs> act accordingly based on the metaphors it's not just a space animal themes oh dragons can attack people and themes that's crazy it's really nuts that's super nuts <laughs> imagery i can't believe it okay um, I mean, and you know, it's not even the ev- you always have to break it down because the whole thing. I'm then, not like I said. It, I don't like. At some point, I'm gonna put these thoughts into a box yeah. and organize them, yes. and then do something with that. But just as it comes off the top of my head, I feel like when you look at a moment like that one in particular, and you said you didn't watch it, but you just so I, along so I'll, I'll give a slight backstory. I don't even care what you saw. <laughs> uh, I'll give a slight backstory for the people at home. Uh, I have been all the way off for, like, the whole show since season one, and then last week, after the podcast, after Wooly said all that vague shit, 
Afterwards, I was like, okay, you got to tell me what the name of the podcast means because I don't understand. And he told me a bunch of dumbass shit. And I, and I believe I stamped my foot and yelled, that's fucking stupid, and left. And then uh, some friends of mine were watching the Game of Thrones, and I decided, you know what, I'll hop in voice chat and just ask him, hey, what's going on? And then that led to that, and so I heard the... I heard about the second to last episode, then the last episode, and then said, ah, fuck it. Just tell me all the dumb bullshit. And I got told some dumb bullshit. I'm quite uh, from, proud of that podcast from, title. From this series. Sorry, mm -hmm. from this season. Quite proud. There is a, there is some dumb bullshit that I'm just like, but why? Just over and over. So that's where I'm at. So, I'm just enjoying the ride over so here. So somewhere around the fourth or fifth McQueen, um, you know, you are my queen. Like, yeah. somewhere around there, yeah, we got area. the, you wait for it, and you always hear the off-screen, like, curse-stab noise when two people are embracing. Yeah. And you're like, yep, there we go. Um, there it is. That's, which, the, that's the dramatic way to kill a loved one. Which is how the the, the chat uh, spoiled it for me last week. But it was almost like a, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, of, course, of course, whatever. that's how that's going to happen. So, um... Instead of a penis. And you get this moment where, like, it's like the, the, the dragon senses something is wrong. Because, you know, they're, like, fucking psychically linked. Eh, they're space animals. They're, you know... There, there. It's, it's, it's Aiden and and, and and Ellen Page, um, and uh, it flies over and is like, "What the fuck?" And oh, then let's stop this for a second. What's that character's name from Beyond Two Souls? Aiden. No, a Aiden and Jody. There. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Um, it's tough to remember. Oof. Anyway, it's powerful. Well, I just the 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 the. The moment happens, and then the dragon's like, "What's going on here? What is? I don't understand. I'm, I'm so upset." And you're like, "Yeah, you should yeah, be. That dragon. makes perfect yeah, sense." I mean, you're, you're, and then it breathes in. And I'm like, "Oh, is it gonna breathe fire on him? But because he's a Targaryen, it's not gonna do anything." And then I don't know, or, or is, is he gonna, gonna yell at the dragon little, again? Because yelling at dragons is a thing that you do from time to time. I don't know, whatever. And then like it just kind of goes, um, rah, and then it breathes all the fire and it gets mad. And I was like, okay, well, it's gonna torch everything because it's super pissed yeah, off. Yeah, it's really upset. But then it doesn't torch everything. It specifically targets the Iron Throne and melts it. And understands that this, <laughs> this, this, this was the chair. problem. It, and she never got to sit on the chair, which I'm like, they're not gonna let her sit on it. They're gonna do the thing where she never gets to. And of course they do. But it's like it literally just targets the chair, like you know, and you're like, I can understand that this <laughs> this human social construct is uh, actually the problem. And I mean, despite that human social construct being represented as a singular item, and let's just you take it, let's just package mm -hmm. a fact for you. Oh, okay. That's the fact that the the chair was created by the largest dragon that ever lived. Yeah. For over a century, breathing fire on it for forty nine days straight. Yeah, um, and just just package that and throw it out because it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. It's this irrelevant that a, a, a newborn that's been a couple years old just melted it in a couple seconds because whatever. Really? It's not even it's book content. It's not even. Wooly, he's really mad. But it's book content. It's book content. But then it's like except for the scene where like Littlefinger and Varys are sitting down talking about how it went down. And they mentioned exactly that fact. Wooly, he was really mad. Which was also one of those moments where you have those two conversing in the early seasons in season one. And you're like, remember when this show, when you thought the show was going to be about the secret power struggles of these two guys behind the scenes? Yes, I did. Right? And then you get that fucking awesome quote where they're like, if you if everything goes, like if, if things fall apart and the realm, uh, and the realm, blah, blah. If the realm collapses, it'll be chaos. Yeah. And then Littlefinger's like, Chaos is a ladder. And then you get that, like, that whole thing. You're like, yeah. Well, it turns out chaos is a, a ramp. Yeah. Because it, you, you, there's a wheelchair accessible. <laughs> That's besides the point. Um, the, the dragon targets the fucking chair. <laughs> and it just melts it. And then you're like, okay, I guess. And it, and it just... We need a new chair. <sighs> Who has a new chair? <laughs> Let's look to the past. <laughs> Let's check out the catalog of designs from the past. Um, man, yeah. So here's the thing, right? 
what this episode actually did was match my expectations, uh, which were incredibly low. And uh, it managed to just, like, it goes, we got to wrap things up with a bow. Yeah. So let's just wrap, let's wrap, wrap it up with a bow, right? Yeah. And... Boy, some of those wrap-ups seem knee-jerk to me. Well, it's just, I mean, you have to kind of take the part of your heart which goes, you need to solve this list of, like, 80 things in 120 minutes. Right. Yeah. Or, or, excuse me, um, uh, uh, 80 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and you kind of have that, mo you kind of have that, and then it starts, and then, like, you're like, okay, we're watching walking, and people are going to be walking for a while, yeah. and you know what? Like, we're not going to get around to wrapping up any of this because the more steps that the more the more steps that Tyrion gets on his Fitbit yeah. and the more John walks around and looks around with the thousand yard stare, the, the less we're going to get done. But, you know, you're trying to build up the fact that there's shitty feelings about it. I have a, a feeling that they got to the end of it and had wrote their big plot points and went, I do there are two characters in particular where they went, we don't know where to put them. We don't know where they should go or do or be or anything. Uh, so let's just pick them up off the tabletop map and just go, he's here now. I mean, Braun, we've soft confirmed he exists out of fan popularity. Yeah. He won the, the Kakashi minor polls. character. And his scenes exist because people are happy to see Braun. Yeah. And he's the master of coins, so badum nah, <laughs> Loves money, get it? Uh, right. Makes, there's no they connection made, between those two things. They made time for punchlines in a moment where every second counts for your wrap up. And it's like, it's like, 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 there's a moment where fucking Edmure stands up when they're like, we gotta pick a king. And he stands up and is like, Oh, oh, I would like to. And he has. They spend at least a minute, maybe, on this joke of this character from the past that you've caught, completely forgotten about, mm -hmm. just being like completely worthless. And then eventually, everyone goes sit down. And then he hits his sword, and it's all awkward. And you hear like a bwah, 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 kind of trombone in the back, almost go off because it's such a fart moment. And you're like, we we could have. We could have taken a moment to properly find out what's going on with Yara and the Ironborn and what she feels about how Danny did things and so on, but let's not do that. You know, let's just gloss right over that. Let's not even... Yeah, whatever. Anyway, there's just... Um, the, the, over, the, 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 weird, the weird thing that I'm saying is the argument seems to be... I'm really disappointed versus it's not that bad. Oh, like, it's... Yeah. It was, like, the weird... Like, because there's always a defense force. There's always a group of people that, like, like it and want to like it, right? But the, the, the stance... Like, it always shows to me how bad something has gotten when the, the... The the people who still like it overall have retreated to, it's fine. It's not as bad as you say it is. It's just fine. Just don't, just don't freak out. It's not that bad. It's not a it's not a loss. It's a draw game. Yeah, we, we just ran the clock. We'll out. just agree to disagree that yeah. it's no, okay. That's Which is how you felt when the first season started with those ice zombies and yeah. then ended with those fire dragons and the whole song of ice or fire fucking thing was going down because it was so tightly fucking writ and understood and the characters and everything was happening in such a coherent way and it was entertaining i remember how excited you were I is do. that how excited you feel now no well that yes, you got but draw yes, game yes but because i'm an asshole look man the the the, the show because we've been with it for so long, you feel things for these characters, and you're not going to escape them, you know? And, like, uh, when uh, I see things like like uh, the way they dealt with Arya, and, like, uh, she goes off literally on the boat into the horizon for new journeys for or whatever. Off. It's like, well, but no, but, like, yeah. but that to me is, like, you know what? Fine, take it. That's your hero's ending, right? 
We've said it a couple times. Hero returns home. Why? Right? After the journey. Mm -hmm. Can't quite fit in anymore because they've, they've been changed, changed by the, the journey. Yeah, Thus, yeah. they're no longer able to. So they move. But whatever. Yeah. We know it. That's totally fine. So what? So her thing is, yeah, no th we don't know what's going on on the map over there. Let's go figure that shit out, right? And you look at the actual map, by the way, and it's two continents, right? And, like, Westeros is, like... Imagine Westeros is like is like imagine if the whole story was taking place in Florida. Yeah. And, <laughs> and occasionally we fly we we sail over to like Cuba and like maybe one of those Caribbean islands. Yeah. And then we just fucking call it, you know? And this is the whole world. But like the map just goes in all directions and I'm, I like I remember making jokes about like Ulthos so like years ago or whatever when there's like this entire all crazy like African continent thing that they don't know anything about yeah um, who knows what's going on over no there? one knows what's north of north yeah. you know what I mean and no one even bothered getting on a boat and heading the other way so like there's a so yeah, whatever anyway I, I thought that was fine I thought that was a nice sure. way to deal with her and whatnot and what the, what the fuck else is she gonna do you know but um, when it just comes down to like and, and, and the other thing too is like the we, we've been saying it over and over, but, like, everyone that worked on this show that was not uh, the writers, right? D&D, &D, uh, who are currently, I, I've, I've caught reference In to hibernation. People, people are currently calling uh, them Dumb and Dumber, Great. which is, yikes. Um, I'll say this, man. Um, everyone that worked on this show is pulling their weight. Actors are absolutely doing their best. They're performing. Mm -hmm. They're doing what they can. Like everyone that's behind like CG and 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 f like cinematography and the only person everyone's doing it. Um, maybe not the water bottle people. Maybe not them. Maybe, maybe not, not. Maybe yeah, not the or the, whoever's supposed to take a quick look over at the set and go, "Hey, get I, that wristwatch you know, and that water bottle yeah, and that car out I of the background." I think, uh, <laughs> with the exception of of those folks, the prop people doing that I stuff, I can't believe it. And that you know what? Again. And I you know what? Believe. God bless. Even those, even the CG people, when they don't have time, and when they see the internet reacting, and when HBO producers hear about how mad people are about the good boy not getting his pats, yeah. getting his head pats, they get to reach back to season four and grab a clip of Jon Snow petting his dog and put it in the finale. Shut up. That's not how that happened, is it? There is currently... More investigation is required, but there's a screenshot circling around, and we need to find out if it's real or not, but it seems to be the exact shot of Jon Snow petting his dog from season four, except that the dog is now modeled, updated, with its ear missing, and it's darker. People and are saying that that ain't real. Is that not real? Yeah, it's not Is real. that real? No, it's still... It's un... Oh. Okay. All right. Well then, fine. Well, Let's do more research. I'll take the blow up. I'll take the blow up. That's fine. It, I I remember when he saw him pet the dog, and I was like, "Did they add that last night?" Yeah. Because man, yeah, people did. were really mad, and I was really mad that you didn't let him do it. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. If that's confirmed fake, then I will gladly. Okay. I'll take that. Um. But uh, everybody's yeah. doing a good job. You know what's really funny? That all these really super good actors. When are asked about there are now so many clips of what I want to say almost every actor on that cast being asked, Hey, how was the final uh? and they all go, We have the one with uh uh Daenerys' actor. It's now down to it's there's now thirty clips by going the way. Going like ah There's now we, thirty. We have Jamie's actor going, Yes, I was a big fan of that. We have uh, uh, we have uh, a fucking Peter Dinklage looking like a fucking hostage. Dude, I've been I've, my Twitter's uh, been logging every <laughs> single one of them for like, a while now, and then it even extends into there's ones where there's no video for it. It's just articles of uh, Varys and Euron Greyjoy uh, talking about their characters being like multi-dimensional in previous seasons and yeah like everyone whether it's in written print or or in in like video interviews are like it's all out there the entire cast it's is totally just fucking fascinating done. to me by the way if that fake if that wolf thing is fake as if the chat's saying that and you have proof of that please tweet it to me so i can confirm yeah. that for sure because there's people saying it's not fake it's so it's fascinating to me let's get to the bottom of we've it. seen a lot of movies and we've seen a lot of tv shows disintegrate but i've never seen like the whole cast 
just start to crawl away from it. This is what I've been saying for the last two weeks now, but this is this is unprecedented because the crawl happened before it ended. Yeah. It's like the, it was mid season when people started to go, ha, ha, ha. You know, and I mean, the thing with the thing with a season is that this is, takes a month and a half to get through. But it's uh, done. It's not like a movie release where it drops and then you have a bad weekend and then you go, woof, a, a month later. Like, everyone had a solid month and a half of like, what is going on? But it was really the last three weeks in particular. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, and that's also when the press junket is flying high because it's the end and it's also when the um the interviews that were being done in advance were being like uh uh drip drip we're gonna, be, we're gonna shoot this episode. episode we're gonna shoot this interview three months ago before it and we're gonna air the interview this is gonna be in between, in between three five and, and six yeah. or whatever the fuck exactly so remember during the interview that went to where to what yeah. to what to what right and then they've already sh and this is probably a couple months after they shot it and they're just like so this means the the interviews that we see of them going <coughs> or uh, uh, right are like way in advance of even the whole season airing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they um, all they all felt it, and you can tell just looking at them. Like, okay, d does Kit have his sh short hair and mustache, right, and shaved and shaven beard? This is post. Yes. Does is Amelia like cut hair and like they got brown hair now? Right, I back think? to normal. Yeah? yeah. Then it's all in post. You know the deal. Um. The, like, uh, like powers originally of fast travel that we that, that were uh, earlier described have now been updated to the point where you are fast traveling from not just, like, location to location across the map, but, like, checkpoints within the city. Mm. And uh, Grey Worm, at one point, pulls a Watson from the fucking uh, uh, creepy Sherlock Holmes game. Just appears in different rooms. He... The, the the episode starts with uh, Jon Snow and and, uh, and Tyrion walking down a road, and like they're just all glassy eyed at, at all the bullshit that happened. And they walk by. Uh, Jon Snow walks by Grey Worm, uh, wrongfully executing uh, prisoners of war. Great. And they get into a little tiff over it. Sure. Um. And then Jon walks on because they're like, "Well, take it up with the Queen." And then he walks all the way through the very nicely shot. Armies all standing and yeah. and sudden like the, re the, the the he walks up to the recently repopulated armies of the Unsullied and the Dothraki who apparently were super dead and then forgot to be dead so now they're back because in between weeks of episodes Danny's been mashing that Dothraki unit button <laughs> to training unit ready training so I spoke unit to, ready I training spoke to a friend of unit mine ready. who was literally <laughs> saying that in the after episode like interview with with D&D &D, they're like I can't believe we just saw the end of those armies and they're all gone only for them to just reappear in their totality later well uh the 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 dothraki forgot that they died you okay, see okay well um, that's a power <laughs> and and the unsullied forgot that they were sacrificed to uh keep the retreat going and to light the moats okay. so you know but anyway and then further sacrificed in the actual battle on um, so double they know. got they came back twice they like dude the respawn button is just like pop 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 it was nuts reinforcements have arrived it it, it it is yeah but it was nicely framed and they were like lining the streets and john walks past them and past the horses past the army the whole thing yeah. all the way up these really long stairs up to you know, uh, where she waits. Yeah. And suddenly, Grey Worm is right next to her. In, fr in front of them. In front of him. In the Despite same... Despite the fact that they walk there in a straight in line. The same stride. So, like, they walk away from him slitting throats. So, unless he immediately turns around and just hoofs it. Got on a horse. <laughs> Right? right? No, gets on Drogon. Okay, and flew over that. But it's a straight line, right? Yeah. So they, oh yeah. They, they, there's no faster way that they wouldn't have seen. <laughs> so, so he would have had to get on a horse what and you, then gone like in a semicircle. I promise, what you didn't see, just like those bottles, what you didn't see was the moment the camera cut to them on the stairs. You missed the part where Grey Worm was standing T-post for like a half second, and then he goes into his regular his regular stance. <laughs> you missed it, but it was there. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> Um, 
Look, man. This sounds great. It was wow, you know. This and, sounds great. And and I, and I guess like, I really I really do want to emphasize the fact that like you can see it trying to tie the bow. Yeah. Right. You can see it trying With to its find gnarled, the ends. mangled fingers. <laughs> yeah. It's using its really decrepit fingers to take the bow and and just do a little bunny ear and yeah. call it a day, but. It has these moments where, like, you have a beautiful shot of, like, the dragon covered in snow. I've seen that. It looks really cool. But then, but it's not snow because it's not actually snowing. It's supposed to be ash. But snow, and, but ash isn't white. Right. And the vision of, like, when, and when you see them walking earlier in the scene, you see them walking through ash, right? Because the city's all fucking roasted. Yeah. And, but by the time they pull up there, it's not, it doesn't look like ash. It looks like hard white snow flaking down yeah and you're like are you is it snow, is it winter still i thought you killed winter what's it's it's not a big deal but it's just unclear and you're the way the soldiers are standing on it it clearly looks like snow and i'm like i guess john snow is just creating a stand of snow it, behind no, him it, it's listen woolly i know i've i've used this this sarcastic tone over the past month to fuck with you on story contrivances, but it started to snow so that the dragon could be covered in snow. Yes. And then pull out of out of the snow and have a cool moment. Yeah. Like and the fact that like the 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 le the, the more my sarcasm hits reality, the stupider the thing we're talking about is. Right. So I and I'm I'm willing to fully take the fact that for the sake of having beautiful cinematography, it it was snow. Yeah. But it just doesn't makes sense that it snows in one area of the city but when you cut back to them walking in from the outside of the city it's a bright sunny day well i mean it's winter you know, like if it started it's, snowing it's, during the battle well, or if it man, started snowing after the battle listen, that's the, fine with, and if you even wanted to say that it snowed uh this episode but it didn't snow last episode because that's fine too but 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 it, why would it happen in one place listen <laughs> man like uh, climate I don't know. in Westeros is all fucked. Call up. it crazy talk if you want, chat. Uh, I'm, I literally don't understand. No, no, they're, what I was they're talking at. about my ability That's to fine. sarcastically whatever. That's fine. But like, I have a different question. Wouldn't a being that breathes fire not a big deal either way radiate just a shit ton of heat? Would that thing even be able to fucking be uh, under snow? No, because magic. Oh, it's it, wait, it's magic fire. Ma dragon fire is, is better than real fire. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dragon fire and real fire are different. So, I'd like to make a complaint about the show because after getting caught up with the broad strokes of the last season. And somebody who was looking forward to watch this show in the future. All I can think about, and I know these complaints are somewhat old because they deal with the ice, ice people, whatever, is that they have the whole last season backwards. They did everything in the wrong order. Are you repeating back to me the things I said yes. last week? Yes, I am. You seem to be spending. But see, I you did... seem to be using this episode to echo back to me the things I threw out but seven see, days here's ago. The thing. I didn't understand what you were talking about then. Now I do. So when I say, Boy, so, they should have done these in reverse. So you know when I make the joke that says a song of Cersei and fire. Yes. Do you understand why? I very much now know that, and that seems. And, uh, you know, I got walked through the events of how that got wrapped up and how stupid that is. And all I can think of is that everyone would be happy if you literally just... Okay, you know how we order our YouTube playlists when it's on manual? Yep. You, you just grab the last episode and just drag it up to number three. <laughs> and then just take the second to last one and then drag it up and then it's fine the, the 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 it's fine so a big part of the problems come from the the the, the cascading failures yes that arise when you deal with the real threat first yeah right a large part of why 3 was so upsetting was because there's no purpose to so much of what has happened if you decide to put politics before the real problem. Mm -hmm. And, um... 
you know the what? show expressly tells you, like I said, through characters looking at the camera <laughs> and telling you, don't think about it, don't worry about it, it will bring you no pleasure to think of these things. Mm -hmm. They straight up say, stop thinking about everything that happened to get you here, just focus on what the fuck is happening now. And 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 you get, like, the these characters that exist entirely to warn the world about the true threat. Yeah. Having the true threat get killed. What are they supposed to do? So they have nothing left to do except bumble around. I, I mean, I just, I feel like I'm just repeating it over and over again. But oh, it's yeah. like, but this is why we start, we have nothing for these characters to do. Their existence is kind of pointless now. And it's not to say that, like, they couldn't have some sort of resolution, but by putting this Their job is over. They're, dumb they did it. game of fucking politics, Game of Thrones, by, 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 actually making that the priority and literally the last thing you see in the intro is the throne going up and going Prah! because it wants to show you that that's what it's all leading up to you just undermine everything the story's been trying to yell at you for the last i want to say seven seasons but it's actually more like five and a half as somebody who watched season one and read the first book the first scene is about the problem like i said the very first yes. thing in, yeah. in, in the thing is about the problem. And, and like, you know, and the, the last scene of the first season yeah. is the counter to that. Yeah. Right? And, and also... And, and, and don't forget, too, the fucking comet that goes by that's like, yo, that only shows up when shit's going down. Yeah. Right? And they don't have to play off of that too much more, but it there was a relevance to this. Well, you beat Final Fantasy X. Sure. Remember when you got to the final thing and you went... Big ass, like, number two problem on the planet, done. Right? Move through the dungeon. Number one problem in the world that should not be dealt with, done. Some fucking bug, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, like now, just all that moment. I really like Final Fantasy X, but all the momentum just fucking drains out of itself now the thing is is that like as much of a colossal fuck up as that is uh you know the gigabotch the the fact that you've committed to it and we had a couple weeks to watch that play out means that we almost we were able to think through that and go okay 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 we've decided to pick the 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 the, 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 the chaos path right we've picked the choice we're going down the shit road right boots ankle deep in feces let's see where this goes you can still steer it mm. and the problem is that everything after that point continues to be worse like there's ways to pick the bad path but still get the better version of it but you can but like you it all like it's like you stopped thinking about each choice after that point i genuinely thought that if the way like from what i was hearing that the way that the story was going to end with this season was going to be a cataclysmic world ending loss with like three characters alive that just leave. And I feel like that would be the most downer ending ever, but it would be totally appropriate and people would be really happy with it. Like, there's literally hints in the book about the fact that, like, um, to create the sword that's strong enough to... I don't want to get into it, but to create the sword that's strong enough to fucking deal with the Night King, you gotta literally stab it through the heart of the person you love. Wildness, right? But that's not the point. The point is, is there's things that I I'm, I get that, like, what kind of bugs me in terms of, like, um, the, 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 the the resistance, right? Some yes. the, the, the defense force in, in this case, is when people are kind of going, like, you guys are just mad because, like, you don't like sad endings, and you're upset that, like, uh, you know things like oh like Danny went bad or whatever and you're just what and it's just a really yeah, people, straw man way it, to it just is, it is the worst version ever which is because there are people who are real I had an ex once that said Berserk was the worst thing ever oh we told well, we have we have a friend right that we know yeah, yeah we same it, thing. yeah who's yeah, just yeah. like Berserk's the worst thing ever because I got to the anime and it was it, horrible things happened to the characters and I felt really strongly about it. It made me sad, thus it's bad. So and those like, people yeah. are real. Yes. But their reality does not mean that everyone who dislikes something dislikes it because bad things happen. I have fought on the side of 
you can't say that you don't understand the, I, I have fought on the side of people of trying to explain to people that sad things happening doesn't equal bad media yeah right? sometimes it means great so anyone who is using that now is clearly not understanding the it's, actual complaints especially right? when like the 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 stuff I was just talking about doesn't seem to be an uncommon feeling of like people would have been fine with a the most downer shit ever. So here's and and the fact that yeah yeah the, <laughs> one of the funny things that like me and Steph were talking about is like the overall sentiment that people like us are getting bummed out because characters we love didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah. Literally, like, I'm like, oh, god damn it, Brienne's still alive, and oh. now we have to watch her cry over a dude that she hooked up with instead of, like, go out like a knight. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, 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 anyway, so... Um, it would have been really cool if Tyrion was the one to kill the dragon. So when you swerve oh, off of the path... I died. So when you swerve off of the path of, like, your pri what your priorities should be, right, two things come to mind where I'm like, okay... Fuck, we've steered off of the best ending, right? Yeah. We're no longer heading towards that. Uh-oh. So what can we do with what we have? Well, there's two things. One, the, the whole George R.R. Martin being a fan of Lord of the Rings thing means that, like, yeah, the the wrap-up wrap is to be compared to the scouring of the Shire. Right. And it's to, to be it meant to be, like, almost an afterthought after dealing with the real shit. Yeah. That's not the way this played out because they got equal importance. And, in fact, the battle got... Like, uh, the Battle of, of Winterfell got one episode, and this build-up got the, the, the full three? fucking three. Yeah. And, it, 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 you know, like, they were given equal importance and, and framed it as, like, we won the battle, but now the final battle. And it just, it's, it builds it up so that the Night King didn't matter. The intro shows you the Night King's march through the wall in terms of the tiles of the floor turning to ice. And they literally just stop at Winterfell. And it's like, oops, that, I guess nothing mattered. No big deal. Nothing, whatever. So we're off that good path, and we're on the we're on the medium to bad ending route, and you're going all right. So two things: one, if you wanted it to be an afterthought type of moment, that's fine. And two, and this is really important, right? The idea of Daenerys Targaryen turning bad, or at the very least, becoming someone that the that the remaining characters do not align morally with. Yes, right. Someone who is using her determination and her point of view to do what she still thinks is the right choice. And, but that ideologically clashes with characters. But is not compatible with the people that are currently that her allies. That got set up from, like, the first episode of the yes, first whatever. Right? Of course that's consistent. You, It would be fantastic to have that happen, right? There is absolutely nothing wrong with a version of this where she fucking completely just does her own thing at the behest of their advice and whatever, she's like, I don't care, I'm doing this my way because this is the way I see it, yeah. right? Blood and fire, that's my. That's how we do it. Um, like, there's nothing wrong with that as a chosen path. Totally. But you have to show how we get there, right? Similarly, and less good, <laughs> you can also do it in the opposite way where you go, all right, the ending version of her has to be the Mad Queen. Evil. We want her to be the one that we saw on the steps, no remorse in her eyes, saying, we have to liberate uh, Winterfell. And it's like, but we just left. We're good. We're, what are you talking about? Yeah. Right? The person, she's like giving a speech that's basically meant to be like, we're going to fight forever, fight forever. Yeah. Right? You're looking at that kind of character and you're going, we can get there. But show us how we get there. Ideally, and it's got to be a little bit more than my best friend's head got cut off. Ideally, there should have been one or two ep uh, instances per season that nudged it about five percent, and then the character would be five percent more unhinged. Those happen, right? And they call that out by having Tyrion literally tell you, "You watched this happen every season, right? Because she burnt someone horribly every season. It's just." <laughs> That the people she was burning were pretty evil people. Yeah. Up until now, it has not been women and children. Sure. So that's where you need to take the slider on her personality and go like, either the world moved or she moved, and it's fine, but you can't click it from zero to eight. You have to slide it over. And So you're, they saying, had no you're saying the events happen, but her, her personality does not appear to change? It just it's just you the, it was all normal until a breaking point it was all good just a week ago okay that's terrible you should have seen that character by the sixth or seventh 
making people freaked out because they're acting weird. Like, like the breakdown, the buildup to her being this fucking, like, ruthless existed in every season and was there. But the but the build up to her seeing um everything that she hated with the Red Keep and Cersei and instead breaking left to burn innocent people and target them specifically and not go after the thing the object of her ire of her hatred yeah. but to to waste time sweeping through the streets to get every nook and cranny is that a baby back there is that a baby crying Whew. all right we got it <laughs> like like literally taking extra time to to burn innocent people that person only existed when we saw her jealous at the celebration party for the night king where she's like everyone loves Jon Snow but all my friends don't are not I don't have friends here yeah and then he t and then two she gets turned down so she doesn't get the dick yeah, right no, dick. no snow dick and then three uh, her friend's head gets cut off and then we see her with the sunken eyes where she's all like she hasn't eaten for days and she's super whatever and you kind of saw that kind of like yeah they, they made it look like she was going to be this like like shriveled kind of fucked up version of herself but she kind of goes back to being fine in the next scene and oh, it's not okay. a big deal yeah, yeah. but they basically had three moments to show you she's losing her mind and it's like no no, you don't make that jump. You know the person you built us to is the one who would, like, burn everything in a straight line to Cersei. Yeah, totally. And if you're in her way, too fucking bad, right? And yes, even if I heard the bells, fuck her. I'm not taking prisoners, yeah. right? That's that's who you built up to over the season yeah, one so to the now. Way, the way that you would do this is that you would ha you have to show... Uh, when you show a character go or break bad, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? You need to... Like, let's take Walter White, right? Walter doesn't jump straight to mass murder. He, uh-oh, I accidentally killed the guy. Now I gotta get rid of it. Okay, maybe I tried to kill a guy, but I didn't manage it. Okay, now I did kill someone. Now, like, there's there's a there's a there's a ramp, <laughs> there's a curve here, right? So if you're talking about somebody, if you want to justify a story in which I'm just gonna burn it all down, I don't give a shit. You need at least one smaller incident where they totally break from reality and go, I'm gonna kill or burn or whatever this much smaller microcosm of the situation, right? So you need to, like... And, and you, uh, you get those. You get those. Okay, so what's... You get... The problem is, like I said, you get those in cases where it's not morally dubious. Okay. Because the first... No, no that's what I'm talking about. You need a situation where, say there's... I, I'm making shit up right, but say there's some asshole that she don't like, and that guy's bad, yeah. right? Yeah. And she burned him. Ah, oh, he burned. Yeah. Right? You need to have a moment where... To show that, like, say, let's say season five. Let's say it's starting to become a little... She's like, and his whole family, too. And everybody goes, what? Why? He goes, well, cuz. Okay, so... And then they... And she burns him, and everyone's like, yeah, I don't so know. So you, you get one of those. Okay. Because you get Sam's family, where um, they basically go, all right, his army surrenders... Uh, the le but like the 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 ar the army leader, which is the 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 fucking the head of House Tarly, yeah. gets fucking roasted. All right, and then his son gets it too, and his son could have survived, but she just she did them both in. Yeah, and Tyrion was like, oh, but what about the mercy though? And she's like, nah, fuck them, they fought me. Yeah, you know, but like, no, I'm talking people that are unrelated. But this is this is it. I'm talking like when I say the family, I mean like grandma on the corner not doing shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it had to be, like, you mm -hmm. need to have moments in which everyone around the character goes, not, I don't really agree with that. That wasn't the best thing to do. They go, why did you even do that? That, why? And then the response is, because fuck them. And mm -hmm. it's, like, tinged with whatever, yeah. right? And so her whole thing is anyone that chooses not to bend the knee, well, then you get it. And that's how that goes. And so it's just, you can, you can, it's like, you, you it's... Both versions of the character, whether the one we were building up to or the one we got, would have worked as long as the tre the, the transition was seamless. Yeah. But you needed more time and more events to do that, slash more episodes, but you also chose to cut this at Even six. Even though HBO because, wanted the longer season. Yeah, and usually I'm always about that brevity, right? I'm always about that ending. You're right, but here this is a case where they're like, I don't know, maybe they're just like, we want to get onto our thing about the about the Civil War not ending, or we want to get onto Star Wars, or who knows? I don't know. I can't yeah. tell you what D and D wanted, 
But um, yeah, this could have dealt with a, a bit more than six, especially to get to all these places for, with these characters. It, it could have had like, you know, um, um, not just her build up, but like, like John's entire fucking like. There's so many moments where you're kind of like. We needed to see the conversation. We probably should have seen the conversation where he breaks the truth to his sisters. We probably should have seen what she was doing. What? That never comes up? It. He starts. They cut away. They cut away mid-conversation. No, that's really a big deal. They literally. You've been. It's the whole thing that's you've been waiting for. That's the biggest deal. Yeah, they just hard cut. Ah, stupid. Um, we really would have benefited from seeing what was Danny up to on the back of that drag? Like, what was she going? Was she crying while she was doing it? Was she just was she fist pumping? She, she made, she had this great moment where you saw her face go off and do it, but it's almost like, like, and then she's gone for a bit. You almost want to see how she processes the whole thing. Yeah. But you just hard cut to her later being like, nah, I'm already gone. It's nuts, whatever. Because if you had like, like you could soften even the, the ridiculous switch over if you had a shot of her on the dragon, like muttering to herself about how they were all in on it. And how, like... Burn them all, burn them all, burn them all like her dad. Yeah. Even like, then, even then, you know. But regardless, whatever. So, blah, right? Macro details. And you can, you can fuck up your macro details, but then you start seeing the micro fuck-ups, and then you're like, oh, God, okay. So, you know, we see Jamie and fucking Cersei get, like... Oh, this is splatted. one of my, This is my favorite thing. And you go, all right, that's how that went. And then Tyrion walks by later on and finds him, and you go, that wasn't... That looked so much more catastrophic when it fell on them. It looks like the... The entire ceiling, the entire ceiling collapsed. No. But then you find a couple of rocks. It was just... The castle aimed at them. And you dust them. them aside like you're looking for dino prints. <laughs> and then you just kind of see that it was maybe a, like two layers of brick, which, you know, that could have been fine. And I was almost thinking in my head, I'm like, I would have ran into the dragon skull. I would have just hit out. So you know what that. the you know what the goofiest thing about that is? I actually have been thinking about that, and I think the problem is, is they write Tyrion has to find them after the fucking castle collapses on them, right? But since Peter Dinklage is a tiny guy, there can only be so much actual rubble for him to remove. Bef so they it has to be just a couple bricks. He's walking cleanly through the area they were in, right? With one layer of dust underneath his boot yeah. and then the one spot of mountain of ru the one spot of rubble they find is exactly yeah. where it's targeted on them and it's like ah, yeah, yes you had to have him find them but it still doesn't make logic you know um it just you just you, it does you just what mm. but don't think about it it's fine right but it's just the little things um the 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 fucking contrivances the contrivances the contrivances you have to create when um Grey Worm, who's now super fucking pissed at everything and everyone because the entire raison d'etre that he has is gone. And his girl's gone, and his army's here, and no one knows what the fuck. And he's like, why did we... What is any of all of this? Um, and should be in a position to just start fucking going to war. Or at the very least, like... It doesn't make sense that he would, like, march out Tyrion and be like, you can't talk. And Tyrion's like, I'm going to talk anyway. And he's like, oh, okay. O okay. <laughs> you know? And then agree to the rules that these foreign people in this foreign land they've just conquered, like, are setting to the point where they're like, we're going to send Jon Snow to the wall and that'll be fine. And, and, like, he's okay with that? And it's like, fine. We'll take you on your word. We're getting on Why? this. Why? We're getting on this boat. And we're leaving, so you could never, ever, ever confirm that 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 you actually did what you said. But I hope you learned your lesson. Evil and then person. the Unsullied get on their boat and literally fuck off to Nath. And you're like, really? Really? You're going to hang on to this guy for two weeks and then drag him out here to try and do some kind of botch negotiation? You wouldn't just slit his throat immediately? The both of them, especially after you fucking found that she, your queen got stabbed? Like... His, I, the way he handled that made no sense in terms of just, like, where his mental state would be at and where his, the people would be at. Like, it would just be a fucking clusterfuck of, a, of, a, of a, um, a civil war for the throne, right? And even the fact that they're like, okay, we're going to sit and we're going to talk about it and have this little discussion. Well, Wooly, if they had that happen, they'd need to have more episodes. We're going to have this little discussion, and you know what? We have no time, so we got to sort it out. Everyone's going to have a little moment where we joke about voting. And then, ha, ha, ha. Okay, great. That didn't mean anything. 
Um, and then, like, they go, cool, so everyone agrees we're going to do it with Bran. And I'm like, I was like, yeah, it's going to be Bran. What the fuck else does he exist for, right? There's no other point to this character. And Isn't he magic? The moment, yes, he does, he's magic. He, is, he has the, the Rinnegan. So the moment you see him sitting there, you're like, of course he's going to be the king, whatever. That's fine. But when Cersei, uh, not Cersei, when Sansa, who uh, uh, is, is sitting there, is like, yeah, I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to let y'all finish, and it's cool that you want my brother to be king, but I'm going to hold the north, though, because I want it. And it's like, but there's no... Re your brother is the guy in charge of... You got to start in. You, you, you're in. You're like, yeah, yeah, but you I let, want it, though. You, but you but you just ask Bran, and he'll be like, yeah, cool. No, but I want it, though. But but I want it, though. But And take, then like, you're like... Seconds. Just ask, ask and that. And then everyone's kid. like, okay, I guess she wants it, so she gets it. That's fine. Queen of the North. <laughs> and then... We hard and then you watch as the as Dorn and the fucking Ironborn Yara just go yeah all right yeah that's fine the two other countries one of which has been independent longer than the North has that are the most angry about being a part of the Seven Kingdoms yeah are just super fine watching one of them secede and then the rest absorb them and they're like no we're gonna chill we're gonna yeah. stay like. It's insane to think that they would agree to that with no problem, you know? Or that fucking weirdo kid that's been sucking on his mom's milk for, like, till he was 12 or that whatever. That kid's around? He's a, not only is he around, he's got some bass in his voice. What? He, he fucking grew up. That's weird. And he's sitting there laughing at everyone's expense at the, jo at the voting jokes and whatnot, you know? And he's like, oh, ha, ha, voting is silly. And it's like, that kid. Yeah, your mom's teddy out of your mouth. It's wild. It's wild. So... You get that kind of nonsense going on where, like, characters are not behaving in the way you would think they would based especially on where they came the, from. So what you're describing is especially weird in a story in which the entire, like, the, the, they, they, they fucking swerved to a story that was all about petty squabbles over a chair, only for the pet, the, everyone's pettiness to suddenly evaporate once a big event happened. And if almost poetic... The scene that follows immediately after what the one I'm describing shows you Tyrion pettily arranging chairs that are then disrupted as characters come in and ignore his placement of them. And it's almost like, again, some sort of joke moment that they were going for that didn't really land, I don't know. But they spend, again, like three or four minutes of closing, closing Game of Thrones with Tyrion just arranging some chairs. And then... They, they set it all up, they show you the book, and he's not in it, and Brienne writes the thing about Jamie, and that's cool, she gets to be the what the thing. Um, and and, and it, then it cuts out, and then it basically just shows you what I'm going to interpret as John going north, uh, finding, his, his finding Ghost, and, and seeing uh, the Wildlings, and then they go beyond the wall, and he marches into the distance with them. I'm interpreting that final shot as John is now the king beyond the wall. Right? Even though he technically never really lost his claim to the throne, like, he did the thing that he was told to do, and he stabbed. And he did it. But he still technically got the claim, and he doesn't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> he's he's got he's got he still has his claim and Sansa really could Sansa is basically um the fucking uh baby ba the youngest Baratheon kid going yeah but I'm I'm want it though I think I'd be way better at it is is her reason to be the queen in the north versus John who still is actively the king of the north and they're just kind of letting it rock so that's fine. What the fuck ever, man. At the end of the day, we move on, we, 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 we drizzle out, and hey, Arya gets to sail into the distance, and we'll take that, I suppose. It fine. <laughs> this sounds like a big old pile of shit. Eight years, dude. 74 hours. Don't worry. The books will come out and fix everything. September. Hard confirmed. What's that? September. Apparently, the books are confirmed for September. Both? Um, let me get some details on that. Not both. At least the next one. I, I, he, said the ne he said the other one isn't... Yeah. Uh, sixth book just got announced for September of this year. He's full of shit. He was out there fucking last week. Hold on. Week. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. 
Let's see if this is real. Let me Google it. I might have gotten lied to. Everyone's laughing at you. Chatter, did you lie to me? <laughs> did you lie to me, Chatter? You got fucking. I think got I got. Fucking I think I got sniped, got. man. I got got by fucking eye patch wolf. I'll tell you. Oh what. yeah, he got everybody. Yeah, dude, don't worry. Where they're gonna put him out in a fucking collector set? It's gonna be all seven books and the remaining two volumes of Berserk. And, uh, fucking Vagabond, and they're all gonna be there, together, in one big book series, and you're gonna read them, and they're all gonna be great. They're all gonna be super good. Awesome. No confirmation on that news. I got lied to. Cheers, bro. Uh, anyway. It's all gonna be there. Doesn't it's even, gonna be, doesn't it's even gonna matter. be really nuts, cause, cause Guts, right, is gonna fly in on his, on his, on Zod, and he's gonna kill the Night King. Whew. I said it before, and I'm uh, and I'm really gonna say it again because now it's hard locked and confirmed that I'm really really sad about the fact that like I don't think I can actually make the recommendation to people. Yeah, that bums me the fuck out, it, dude. Man. It, uh, 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 BSG and Dexter, like I I so I brought up like, hey, apparently Dexter ended really bad to a friend of mine who watched it, and he's like. They're, they're like torn as to like which is actually worse here and like it's funny because there's a there's a genuine feeling and it's an interesting argument to me which is just because it ended badly doesn't mean that the enjoyment that you had in the lead up was for naught and that's true right the enjoyment that you had Season one, two, three, four, which everybody seems to agree is great, right? That didn't, that doesn't go away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that's ignoring the fact that the last thing that you deal with in a work is gonna be the most powerful thing that you remember about it, and it's gonna color all of those memories. It's gonna, it's gonna be the takeaway that you use. As, so, hey, my takeaway from the wire: the last season. It's like an 8 instead of a 10 bordering on 11, right? It's kind of a letdown. Still great. Still great. The thing with the serial killer was a little far-fetched, but still great. I still, I, I always think, I think of season 1 when I think of The Wire every time. I think of season 2. I, I think of that couch. Four. I think of that couch out yeah. in the fucking, in the yard. Yeah, I think, I think, I think of, uh... I think of I think of Zig fucking losing a can. Sure, sure. And I think I think of Presbo freezing in place when that girl's face gets cut. Okay, right. Um, but like I, no, and I I think about where's Wallace. Um, also, Prop Joe just existing. Oh, Prop Joe's my favorite character. <laughs> Prop Joe's the best character in the wire. <laughs> the fuck you wearing that suit? <laughs> it's like eighty degrees out here, and you walk around there isn't even in the fucking clipboard. It's got a fake clipboard. Oh, Brock Joe's the best character in the wire. Oh, what a good show! I, I um, it, right, I think of Breaking Bad. Fucking Ozymandias. Wow, that's the shit. That's an amazing ending, right? So on and so forth. When I think of BSG, which is my personal journey with this that nobody else was on, apparently, I think all I can think about now is how bad the ending is and how how. The, the characters that I cared about, all, like, for nothing. Like, it's, it's fucking pointless. The other problem is whether or not the show is an easy watch. Yeah. Right? So, um, when, I like, you can't, Game of Thrones is not an easy watch. It takes, you have to actually pay attention, especially in the early watch. seasons. It's an active watch. You're sitting down, you're involved, you're not really doing it's much like, else. Uh, it's like, I would say it's like Breaking Bad or like The Wire. It's like, no, put your fucking eyeballs open. But here's the thing, though. Not everything's like that. Sopranos is actually an easy watch. It's pretty chill. It's pretty chill. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Surprisingly, right? Um, Something about, there's certain shows that just are, like, there's just more to track than others, right? Yeah. And at any given moment... Game like, of Thrones, you're tracking a map, for fuck's sake. Yeah. And at, at any given moment in Sopranos, you're tracking the episode it's in. Mm -hmm. And occasionally a couple of branching points, but most of the, for the most part... Yeah, Big Tony's mad about some bullshit. Some, something happening in that episode, yeah. right? Uh, in this case, if you were to tell people, go back, check it out, like, if you give them the forewarning that it's going to fall apart and then they still want to commit to it, that's fine. But I feel like... I would rather recommend something that just doesn't fall apart on them. Right. That they'll come away feeling good. 
So why would I go to and this like, and, 70 hours? And be like, this was a good use of my time. I'm really happy how that worked out. I feel joyful that I was able to enjoy a work of media that I feel like broadened my horizons of story, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Right? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, no, totally. I like, and, and I'm torn because if it was, and here's where, here's where the Game of Thrones situation is actually, I feel somewhat unique. Right? Game of Thrones... Like, so, you look at BSG and the final final fucking season's really bad, but the final episode is the fucking breaking point. The final episode is where it goes from, like, kind of bad to, like, this is terrible. Right? Game of Thrones, I heard people complaining about the entire fucking season. Right? Because when you have the bad last episode, you know what you can do? You can just say, you know what should have happened? And fix it. Right? And go, yeah, that last episode sucked, but they could have done this, 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 and this. With Game of Thrones, you have to do that for a whole fucking season? But or on- two? But honestly, honestly, based on expectations, like, the 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 turnaround, to me, was the Battle of Winterfell. It was episode it was halfway three. Halfway through the season. It was, it was 8.03. Okay. Right? 8.01 and 8.02... Yeah, you're setting things up, I guess, and I it's whatever, it's fine. I, I'm going to see where you're going with this. That's that that's the feeling of what you're watching. It's the setting the table episodes. Yeah. Right? You, you kind of give setting the table episodes more leeway based on the plate that follows. Totally. Absolutely. So that's how those two go, you know? Um and you understand that Danny falling in love with John in the course of a fucking God, it was so fast, but like they had to, they rushed it getting like you, you feel it. Kit and you, Harrington's very attractive. <laughs> like, <laughs> you feel the speed of that and you go, it's kind of fast, but okay. He's, he's got that, you know? he's got those baby eyes that chicks go nuts for. Yeah. He's a very pretty man. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. And also, as we've established, there's a genetic component that fueled that. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, that's a thing. The, she can smell it. Smell it. Smell the Targaryen. In smell him. it right in there. Yeah. Mm. Um, smoky. You know, <laughs> out with a whimper, not with a bang. And um, you know what's onward to greater projects. So I would like they to go. I would like to bring up. And don't worry, I'm going to mention a movie. I'm going to do absolutely nothing about talk about its details, just its tone. But people who talk about how downer endings are please stop talking about game of thrones no no continue downer endings you know that's why people will get upset there's a lot of people who really really enjoy me included uh stephen king adaptation called uh the mist yeah right yeah the mist has the most depressing ending of anything i have ever heard of it is the rawest meanest cruelest ending for a story ever mm-hmm and it makes that whole story great. Mm. Like, the story is pretty good, and then you get there, and you're like, I, like, I can't. Like, it, 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 it damages you okay. as a person, right? That's the only reason people care about that fucking movie. If, it, if that movie ended like a horror movie... It, no one would give a shit about it or talk about it at all. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of thinking of, like, M, uh, M. Night Shyamalan movies where... Uh, at least of the ones I've seen, like, you, it's like if you remove the twist, it just becomes a waste of t- your time. Yeah, it's like, it's just kind of boring. There, there was nothing here until your twist. Because Shyamalan stuff is especially, it's like, it's the mystery. What is it? What could it be? What, oh, 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 and then it's like, oh, it's stupid. And that's that's what killed his career. He's still a decent director in some cases, right? But the whole thing, a fucking sixth sense. It's like, well, what's what's really going on? And then the revelation is like, oh, that's really cool. That recontextualizes the story. It yeah. makes it more interesting. It makes it more interesting. Yeah. You get to all the way to the happening. Like, oh man, this is really crazy setup. What could be? Oh, that's stupid. That's fucking dumb. Yeah. Um. I. I something comes to mind. I saw uh, someone asked uh, basically going like, where was all this uh, snow? Because I pointed out the fact that um, uh, that. Fucking what's his name? Uh, that that one of uh, that David, I believe, uh, was also the writer on X Men Origins Wolverine. Oh, wow! Really? Yeah, uh, and fun. yes, we all know that the Star Wars is going to be lit. I think is yeah. the quote. And we all and and yes, like we all have extensive details on how 
um, that fuckface over at Fox ruined Scared. all hero movies and whatnot for a full a full decade. Yeah, out of spite. So we all know, we all know. But he still wrote that script. He still wrote it, and um, that's there. And I kind of like. I remember, I, I like someone was like, "Where was all this like hatred for D and D back when you were enjoying the show?" And, that's the stupidest question. And ever. I had to like, I that had is to the stupidest. I had question. to reel back and really sit and think about like. I don't. Where's the hate? Where's the hatred for your school bully before he started pantsing you? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, um, where's I was the- enjoying the product. Where's the hatred for the chef before you got to the fucking barf at the bottom of your soup? You know, like before you found the turd floating in your in your fall. Like, Where, where's the hatred for your neighbor before he started having his dog shit on your lawn? Yeah, and it's like, just, no, what, what a stupid fuck question. And it turns out the chef was following the recipe that that the better chef told him <laughs> to the T, <laughs> but then at the last second decided to like. No, I want to put my own spin on this. Put my own spin. Yeah, yeah. I want to make my mark. And he squatted over the pot, and I'm like, well, this is I, my mark. The soup was good soup because he learned from a really good soup maker how to make good soup, and then I found the problem at the end. And then I, I didn't like it. That what? Is, that is a laughable sentiment. How does your brain work? Does time... Like, is time a concept? No. In your understanding of things? Anyway, so... There um, are people who view the past as a singular of time. Yeah. Which is really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for YouTube clip purposes, let's cut it here.